rock and roll. We have tonight, uh, a, a, it's Tuesday night, but Thursday, Thursday night is a big holiday called Tuba of, which is the 15th. Two is Tet Vav, which is the equivalent of 15. So the 15th of the month of Of. Generally, anytime we have a lunar month, the 15th of the month is when the month is full. So for a quick 60 second recap, we have January, February, March, April. We have 365 days a year. That's following the solar cycle, the solar calendar. The Hebrew calendar follows the lunar calendar, which is following the month, following the moon. How do you follow the moon? Well, when the moon starts as a sliver, it takes 15 days to wax, which means on the 15th it's the full, and then it starts to wane again, 15 days. So that's a full lunar cycle, or full lunar, what we call a month. Happens to be, it's not exactly 30 days. If you have your math out, it's actually 29 hours, uh, 29 days, 11 hours, and 44 minutes. So if you do that 12 times, so if you do that 12 times, that's called a year. So 29 days, 11 hours and 44 minutes times 12 is 354. Which means the lunar year falls behind 11 days. Thus, give or take every three years, we have a leap year. So we can, well, instead of falling back, we have it happens to be the Muslims who also follow the lunar cycle. They do not have a leap year. They do not have this extra month that we in Judaism do have to balance out the moon and the sun. And thus every year, the Muslims who are following the lunar cycle are falling behind every year 11 days, 11 days, 11 days, 11 days. And that's why their holiday of Ramadan sometimes can be in the winter and sometimes in the summer. But the Jewish people don't want to have Passover sometimes in the summer and sometimes in the winter. They want Hanukkah during uh, Christmas time and we want Passover during Passover time. So to make sure that works out, we, we have a leap year, which means after three years of following behind 11 days, it ups it up, okay? So that's, so now we have now, all our Jewish holidays are following the lunar, the lunar month, the lunar year. So this month was a very hard month because we had the ninth day of Av, and we fasted. I fasted with a special serious migraine headache. So that was my, so that was the ninth day of Leo. So very hard month for the Jewish people. That's when the destruction of the temple took place. But just a few days later, when the moon is full on the fifteenth, is a big, big holiday. So big is the holiday that the Jewish people, the boys and the girls, the maidens, the singles. This was the ultimate J-Date singles party. Thousands and thousands of singles would go to the Temple Mount, in the Temple, and uh, they swapped business cards. <laughs> I'm not sure what they gave in those days, but it was something, right? That I gave a guy to get numbers. Oh, it was a, a telephone number or something, right? You're actually wondering, right? There's no business cards, no telephone numbers. What would you, what would you give your potential uh, an address? Okay, but we haven't explained why. Why is the 15th of Av such a big day? All we explain is that it was a big party. And we can appreciate it being a good day because the 15th, like we explained, is always the zenith of the lunar month. The 15th of Leo is when the moon is at its full, is at its climax. And that's why we have Passover is on the 15th of Aries. Sukkot is on the 15th of Libra. So the 15th is always a very big deal in any month. Also in the month of Leo. So what happened on the 15th of Leo, which gives cause for this great Jewish holiday that is commemorated and celebrated till today. And this Thursday night, there are thousands of organizations that are going to be having singles parties, including the High Center East Coast, my brother Mesh, and one right here in LA, the YJP. So it's a very big deal. And I'm marrying somebody Thursday night in downtown. Such an auspicious time. It's a big holiday. So let's take a look at what the Talmud has to tell us about this great day. And we're learning from one of the 63 volumes of the Talmud. And as you see at the very top, we're just gonna be doing the English, so we're always gonna keep to the left side of the page. On the very top, it says Ta'anit. So this is the holiday 
or rather the volume of tractate, the volume of ta'anit, of fast days. So I'm on the third paragraph where it says the Mishnah concludes. You see that? Does everyone see this? The third paragraph where it says the Mishnah concludes. You got that, David? David, right? Yeah. 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 Anyone go, go too fast? You don't understand? You just uh, you let me know. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel said, "Israel had no days as festive as the fifteenth of Av and Yom Kippur." Now again, we're talking about the rabbis from the Talmud. We're going back thousands of years. This is not uh, something that I took off Google. This is the Talmud going back. So when that studies, hey, how are, how are you? You came just in time. How are you? Shalom, shalom. Let's pass it down. We're just speaking about Tuba of and the ultimate singles party. I haven't seen you in a long time. It's been a while. Okay. So what page am I on here? Good? Declined. Yeah, very good, yeah. So these are the rabbis, by the way, that when we discuss Rabbi Shem, these are the rabbis that saw the first temple. Some of the rabbis saw the second temple, the destruction. So it's, it's not a rabbi today in Los Angeles that uh, has, is getting their Roth IRA accounts and their second home, and they have certain uh, three-week vacation days. These are serious rabbis. So these are like the Moseses of their time. It's a big deal. So this Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel said, Israel had no days as festive as the 15th of Av, and Yom Kippur, again the 15th of Av being this Thursday night. When the maidens of Jerusalem would go out dressed in white garments that were borrowed. So as not to embarrass one who had none, who had none, no garments. So you think the idea about having uniforms in school today, so no one should feel slighted, this idea already started thousands of years ago. That the rabbi said, everyone should come with borrowed garments, white garments. Everyone should have this uniform, white garments, not to embarrass anyone. All the garments worn on these occasions required immersion in mikvah. Today we don't have this deal because today we don't have the laws of ritual impurity. Other than married ladies, but I'm not going to go down that. But today, back in the day, if you would touch a corpse, you would touch a dead, uh, a dead dog, a cat, even a, a roach, you were called ritually impure. And to go into the temple, you have to go to the mikvah. That's why recently with the southern excavations, it was mind-blowing that they found hundreds of mikvahs because those Jewish people had to go into the mikvah. You couldn't have one mikvah with a line around the city of Jerusalem. So they had hundreds of mikvahs. I saw with my own eyes these mikvahs. Next page. The maidens of Jerusalem would go out, now I'm on the top of page, your second page, 26B2. The maidens of Jerusalem would go out and dance in the vineyards. Young man, raise your eyes and see what you choose for yourself. Check me out. Today you go to a club, a bar. No one knows how to speak to anybody. You say, here's my email address. No one knows how to say, look at me. What do you think? You know? Okay. They continue these maidens. Do not pay attention to beauty. Pay attention to family. Grace is false and beauty is vain. A woman who fears Hashem, God, she should be praised. So these are what the maidens would say. So what does this mean? Let's decrypt some of the, 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 the verbiage over here. So the commentary tells us there are three types of girls. The girls who are good looking would say, Go back, look at, look at your line again. The girls who were good looking would say, young man, raise your eyes and see what you choose for yourself. Look at me. Look how beautiful I look. The girls who were uh, mediocre would say, don't pay, pay attention to beauty. The beauty on the outside isn't everything. Don't pay attention to beauty. Pay attention to family. I come from a wonderful lineage. In Yiddish, it's called Geja. In English, they call it uh, arist uh, I'm, 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 arist I'm, I'm, uh, aristocrat. What's aristocrat. the word? Aristocrat. A word like the Kennedys. Or oh, I'm a son of a diplomat. I'm a son of a rabbi. Or a son, I'm a son royalty. of son of a royalty. I'm a son of a celebrity. Today, it, 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 uh, 
uh, being aristocrat depends it's relative you know yes. aristocrat for whom so those were the second group of girls that would say that and the girls who were not so good looking and didn't come from royalty or from a prestigious family they would say grace is false and beauty is vain how you doing Rick a woman who fears Hashem she should be praised look at me for who I am not for my looks because who knows what I'm gonna look like when I'm 55 and we see how many men swap in the 55 year old for two 25 year olds <laughs> family can't be everything who knows what's going on how you doing Robin maybe you can share with Rick or with Sir Charles or somebody else <clears throat> So these were the three types of girls that would <laughs> approach the men with this different verbiage that the Talmud told us over here. This is what took place at this mega singles party in the temple. Interesting that they're also quoting King Solomon of Graces Falls and Beauty is Vain from the Eshet Chayel which we say on Friday night. I notice that that is what we say in our Eshet Chayel Friday night speaking about the woman of valor the woman who has righteousness the woman who fears Hashem she should be praised and of course there's a lot of Kabbalah on these three quotes for the from the three different ladies but we're not gonna go there right now but that is what took place that I want to bring to your attention at the ultimate party that took place in the temple now we have yet to discuss why why has this night become such a special night the 15th of Av thus we have a party in the temple all we explained so far from the Mishnah from Rabbi Shimon Ben Gamaliel is what what happened we didn't explain why so let's go to your third page you see Miriam I'm covering ground What page are we on? 30B2. 30 30 I'm on your third page, 30B2. Aaron, why don't you read? Go ahead from the top. Our mission is stated. Uh, Can you read? You know my glasses? We can move on. Okay, no problem. Go ahead. Oh, well done. 30B2 at the top. Our mission is stated. Israel had no day. Where? No, no. Wait, wait, wait. Our mission is stated. Then skip the Hebrew. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel said, Israel had no days as festivity as the 15th of our annual Kibbutz. And the Jemara says, no. Tomorrow. Okay, stop right there. Okay, you guys have seats. You have it. Maybe you can share. You know what they want to share with me and give them, give them that. Is that okay? So 30b2 is the mission is stated we already explained that there is no days as festive as the 15th of Av and Yom Kippur now the Talmud the Gemara by the way is the same way as Talmud so the Talmud asks it is understandable that Yom Kippur is considered this an especially festive day now for me that was a little funny the first time I read this <laughs> because who thinks that Yom Kippur is festive yes. but the Talmud makes a blanket statement it's understandable that Yom Kippur is a festive day okay why since it is a day of of uh, is a day of forgiveness and pardon how are you doing we have another person here want to share with rick how are you doing you want to share with are you, are you sharing already charles want to share with uh jump in bring your bring your cheering bring your cheering 
I'm expecting four more people soon. <laughs> okay, so it's understandable Yom Kippur is considered special for us today since there's day of forgiveness and pardon. Okay, that makes sense. I'm being forgiven. I'm being pardoned on Yom Kippur. So it's a festive day. So next when you're on Yom Kippur at the Writers Guild Theater and the rabbi tells you to be a little bit more uh, downtrodden or not to be too smiley, remember this Talmud. Say, hey, it's a festive day. And also because it was the day on which the second tablets of the Ten Commandments were given. So another reason for Yom Kippur being a festive day. Because the second tablets were given on Yom Kippur. Hence, Yom Kippur is a day of forgiveness. God forgave the Jewish people. He came down and gave the tablets on Yom Kippur. Everyone's good here so far? How, however, what is the significance of the 15th of Av that it should be observed as a festive day? Which is the crux of our evening tonight. What happened on the 15th of Av? The Talmud now is going to list six reasons as to what happened on the 15th of Av. Here we go. The Gemara answers. Rav Yehuda said in the name of Shmuel, this was the day that the tribes were permitted to intermarry. If you came to our classes a few months ago when we discussed the prophets, there was a certain uh, group. And let's take, a look at, let's take a look at footnote 12 and let's see what it says there. Skip the italic, italics. These two verses teach that a woman who had inherited land you permitted from marrying out of her tribe, lest her real property transfer permanently to her husband's tribe upon her death. On the 15th of Av, the sages arrived at the conclusion based on the years of the da, that this permit only part of the generation that entered Eretz Yisrael. So if you remember last week's Torah portion, the daughters of Tzlavchad, and they complained about the transfer of tribes because they were only daughters, there was no sons. In any event, Joshua decreed this idea of someone marrying a Jew from another tribe, if you were a girl and you married a guy from another tribe, your tr transfer, your asset was transferred to your new husband. A lot of people didn't want to start marrying out lest you lose the property. Like you have a lot of... You have to give it to him? It's, he's a new rightful owner. Not you? Not you. He's, it's a new, under the new family lineage, under his new family name. But says the Talmud, this business stopped on the 15th of Av. So this idea of tribes only marrying into tribes stopped on the 15th of Av. They just stopped for one day. No, they stopped, period, from there onwards. Okay. Because they did not want this whole idea of people only marrying their own tribe lest the assets move out. Okay, so that's point one. And then it goes into a back and forth about the dollars of Tzalafchad. Let's f f skip that. I'm on now your second column where the Gemara offers another explanation. You want to read that? Want to see that? S second column. Want to continue? Here. The this is now our second reason. So that's what I meant about the prophets we discussed, we discussed a few months ago. Okay. There was a certain situation where there was a rape and there was a murder and basically the Jewish people made a pact. Whoever was the cause from whose tribe is the culprit of this rape and this murder, none of the Jewish people can marry into that tribe. That tribe was Benjamin. So it was a few years that this is the only time where you had this idea of Jews not intermarrying with other Jews. The only time in our Jewish history, till today, thank God, there's no such thing of intermarriage of an Orthodox Jew with a Reformed Jew or a Reformed Jew with a Conservative. A Jew is a Jew. There's no such thing of intermarriage. My father says, as long as you marry a Jew, it doesn't care what. It doesn't care what you're. A Jew is a Jew. However, there was one period in our Jewish history over 3,000 years where there was such a concept. And that was as a result of the story at the end of Joshua. And it only lasted a few years. So when did they de when did they stop this decree on the fifteenth of Av? The temple was built almost four hundred years later. You understand? And what, wasn't there a period of time 
somewhere that there were only daughters from a tribe and this one of the patriarchs said that women could inherit property because there were no Yes, sons. that was the, the first one, the daughters of Tzlavchan. Yes, okay. you're correct. So that was an error of when the Jews entered into the land of Israel. This was a little bit after the times of Joshua, at the end of volume Joshua. This was this episode that I'm talking about with the tribe of Benjamin, give or take 150 years after the tribe, after the entry of the Jews into Israel. And that's when this episode occurred. And everyone decreed no intermarrying with the tribe of Benjamin. There were only 600 members of the tribe of Benjamin left. The tribe of Benjamin was going to be wiped out. There was going to be 11 tribes amongst the Jewish people. This is at the beginning of the Jewish history. So they had to make a whole figure out how we can absolve this decree so Benjamin can marry into the other tribes. And they said uh, from for the 15th of on, of onwards, no problem, we can marry into the tribe of Benjamin. And that's how the tribe of Benjamin was saved. Did the other thing set precedence that the woman could still inherit property from the original point on? I mean, was that a common thing? Or is that only a significant one-time thing? No, that was, that was uh, a one-time thing. No, it was not a one-time thing. So it changed the history, yes. Moses said, I, this was already in the Bible, the story of the, the daughters of Tzlavchad. And Moses said, actually, I don't really know. He says, give me a moment. He's, he goes to God, and God says, yeah, they're correct. Okay, so yeah. They got to keep their land, yeah. As long as, as long as they were single. But once they, mar once they married, it's not just the daughters, it's anyone. Once you marry, the tribes would always go based on, it was, it it was patrilineal, not matrilineal. I, I don't really know how the, how that worked, but half half and exactly how the division worked out. Uh, my understanding is that this whole idea of transfer through marriage did not happen after the first after the first generation when the Jews went into Israel. This whole idea of the assets belonging belonging to the children of the father and the daughters of Tzlacha said we also want God said no problem they can also have. An idea of the marriage issue, so thus the assets get transferred, that only took place in the first generation. Because then it became too complicated. Yeah. That's all. And the 15th of Av is when it stopped. So we have now the dollars at Slavka was one, we have the tribe of Benjamin was two with the rape. Now let's continue. Let's continue. Skip two paragraphs where it says the Talmud offers a third explanation. You want to read the one? The th Talmud offers a third explanation? Go ahead, you do it. Rabba Barchana. Rabba Barchana said in the name of Rabba the fifth of all was the day in which those destined to die in the wilderness finished dying. For Mara said, so long as those destined to die in the wilderness were not finished dying, there was no divine communication with Moses. I stop right there. Um, this is a little bit tricky. So. You can look at footnote 18, but if you, you don't want to read it, I'll, I'll explain it quite briefly. We know that as a result of the spies, God said all males from the ages of 20 to 60 are going to be wiped out. So far, so good? 20 to 60? 20 to 60. Which means you had to be under 20 or over 60, the Jews that left Egypt, to actually walk into the land of Israel. If you're between the ages of 20 and 60, now if you're considered a biblical adult, you are not merited to go into the land of Israel. This was a result of the sin of the spies and the Jewish people backing up those spies. That was the consequence, okay? That was the consequence. When did the spies come back and give this report? On the 9th of Av, on Tisha B'Av. We know this by the mathematics of when the Jews left Egypt, what day of the week it was, so the Talmud figured that out already. Coincidence? This is the origins of the darkness of Ninth of Av, yeah. So the, the Ninth of Av in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew calendar was always fr like a, a Friday the 13th. Yeah. Okay. Every year in the Ninth of Av, that's when some of the adults of the desert that were destined to die, that's when they died, on the Ninth of Av. So every year the ninth of Av was basically a mini bloodbath in the desert because that's when Jewish people started dying out on the ninth of Av and every year on the ninth of Av. However, since they didn't have a proper calendar 
They didn't have a nice uh, iPhone with them in the desert. It's possible that they were mistaken on the 9th of Av. If it was the 9th of Av, maybe it was only the 8th of Av. Maybe it was only the 6th of Av. Maybe it was a cloudy night. They couldn't see if it was the full moon. Only when they saw the full moon in its entirety by the 15th of Av, or six days after their calculation from the 9th of Av, they would celebrate because that meant they had another year to live. So either they died out on the 9th of Av and anyone that didn't die out, they would wait to the next day because maybe they miscalculated. They would wait to the next day, maybe they miscalculated. But on the 15th of Av when they saw the full moon, there's no miscalculation. They know they passed the 9th of Av and it's a day to celebrate. And so they did. So the 15th of Av, back from the times of the desert, was already a day of celebration because there was a difference of life and death so that was the third explanation from Rabbi Barachana the fourth explanation you do not have I skipped that one it was about one of the evil uh, kings when we discussed, discussed kings he let Jewish people go back into Jerusalem and bring sacrifices and he removed the blockade on the 15th of Av. So just trust me, that's the fourth explanation. Now let's go to your page. This is the last of your packet, 31A1, where it says the Talmud advances. Danielle, you want to read? I forget his okay, first name again. Moshe. 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 You have a paper in front of you or no? Okay, you want to read on page 31A1, which says the Gemara advances another, this is the fifth explanation of the 15th of Av. Yeah, Rav Masna said. Very good. So this fifth explanation is during the times of the Second Temple when the Romans led the, the siege and breached the walls of Jerusalem and ultimately destroyed the Second Temple. 70 AD. 70 AD. So prior to that, already during this uh, onslaught of the Romans, you know, making things really difficult for the Jewish people. So the, uh, many Jewish people left Jerusalem and there was a yeshiva in Yavna, Jewish people already, already the, the migration of Jews leaving Israel or leaving Jerusalem started already back then. And you had a, many, many Jewish people who lived in a city called Beitar, which still exists today in Israel. And many of those Jews were already killed by the Romans. And to add salt to injury, they did not allow for those Jewish people to be buried. And it was on the 15th of Av, by coincidence, once yet again, that these Romans allowed these bodies to finally be buried. How many months it was, I think it's discussed elsewhere, but uh, it was a few months, it wasn't a few days. And that's the miracle that the bodies did not decay. So the rabbis made a, added a blessing in our Birchat HaMazon, till today all of you say it, it's in every Siddur. So one of the blessings is Hatova HaMetiv, it's a blessing, it's a one-liner in there. And this blessing was instituted back from the times of the Second Temple. Why? Because the Jewish people of Betar, their bodies did not decay and they were allowed to be buried as well. And that took place on the 15th of, of Av based on Rav Masna. And this is the fifth explanation that the Talmud is bringing down. That, that, that we know of. Very interesting. I would like to see where it says, very interesting, I'd like to see where it says that. 
I'm not I'm not uh, objecting okay if you, if you see it anywhere Charles you let me know um, Jeff you want to read the last one the Gemara for the sixth and final reason So they actually coined Tuba of the 15th of Av. We call it today the 15th of Av, but they actually gave it a, a, a name. They called it the day of the axis breaking. I'm not sure you say that. Tfar Magal in Hebrew, or in Aramaic rather. Okay, so what's this business? So we know we learned in the last class in one of the chambers in the temple that a massive room, 40 foot square, it's a big room, and this is where they stored the wood for the altar because they needed to have the sacrifices. So you always had a fire and you need to feed that fire wood. Where are they getting the wood from? From the forest, right? The nice cedar wood came from maybe Lebanon, but the regular wood came from the regular forest south in Israel somewhere. However, it had to be pure wood. Pure wood meant no worms, no bugs. And if any of that wood was defiled or contaminated, we said before, spiritually impure. And they actually had to put it elsewhere. They couldn't use it for the, for, the, for the altar. So they're constantly felling and cutting down the trees, bringing in the wood. But from the 15th of Av onwards, they would stop cutting the wood. Why? Because the summer heat came to its zenith. In that we're in the pinnacle right now, the smack dead point in the middle of the summer, or the hottest point, I should say. And from the 15th, from the 16th onwards, the heat is, is starting to uh, to wane and they're nervous that with the moisture the bugs will start to come in there again so they said you know what no more cutting down trees we don't want to contaminate the temple and it thus became a day of celebrating not just for the trees because they <laughs> are not getting their trees uh, cut anymore so the people the, the the nature people would be very happy about this so if you're into uh the naturals and the nature this is a good day to celebrate no more cutting down the trees and um, that's it so this became a day of celebration it's a little funny this one all the other ones make a lot of sense right people stop dying people are being buried bodies don't decay and here now the sixth explanation that the Talmud brings down is an interesting one it's we're celebrating that the trees are no longer being cut So, right, so it's interesting, footnote six. So it's, maybe it's the woodcutters who are celebrating. They gotta go home now. So the trees are happy, the woodcutters are happy. It says also in the commentary that they would, um, they would break the axes, hence the word, the axes, the axes breaking. Rav Manasha said they therefore called this day the axes breaking. They didn't call this day the trees stopping felling. They called this day the axes breaking because they would break the axes, which is, gets even more funny. If we're celebrating that we're starting to so stopping to cut the trees, so Ganuk, that's that's a holiday. Why are we calling this holiday? And according to the Talmud, the axe is breaking. So we broke the axes because we're not using it anymore. So save it for next year. Right? Every Jewish person I'm sure has a toolbox in their garage. If you're not using your axe, you put it in the shed and you use it next year. Now I'm uh, somewhat crippled when it comes to using an axe. I can't touch a hammer or a nail. My wife doesn't let me do any, just change the light bulb. That's as far as I go. So I have no toolbox in my house. <laughs> so the maintenance guy says, metal, can I get the screwdriver, the Philip? I don't know what he's talking about. There's nothing in the garage. Bring your own. Yeah, bring your own. <laughs> but it's interesting, really. Why would they break the ax? It sounds a little bit violent. So 
I just did a funeral a few days ago and one of the things to have a kosher burial is that the coffin has to be made out of wood. It has to be all wood that even the nails are not nails, they're pegs. They're wooden pegs. Why? Because metal represents violence. Metal represents weapons. To the extent that it was decreed that if you ever wanted to chisel stones, you had to chisel it off site, off Temple Mount. And then you can bring your properly chiseled stone or marble, whatever it is, onto t into the temple. Because we did not want to hear the banging of the hammer, the chisel, the axe on Temple Mount. Because those things represent to shorten man or woman's life. And the temple represents peace. Shalom. Yerushalayim. Shalem. We represent peace. The true religion of peace. Shalom Muhammad is peace. So thus, we're always, not to say allergic to metal, but we just didn't want to bring metal and the sound of metal into the temple. And therefore, everything was done off-site. As a result, the axes that were used to cut the trees for the altar, it wasn't only that the wood chopper was happy that he didn't need to cut anymore, but this idea of this violence, so to speak, was, was terminated until next season. Everyone was breathing easier, so to speak. Maybe they weren't physically breathing easier, but subconsciously, there was a good energy. No more chiseling, no more hammering, no more cutting. We Jewish people, we want to just pray, we want to meditate, we want to bring sacrifices and so forth. And that's why they broke the axe. They didn't want to store the axe for next year. They wanted to remove themselves from this axe. And that's why Rabbi Menashe said, we actually call this day, not the day of ceasing to cut trees, but it's a day of breaking the axe. That's what they called it. So I was explaining this about this idea of the all wooden coffin to this, uh, you know, this group. So they, they got it. Never mind that the funeral homes want to zet you with an extra $15,000 on a stone, very fancy schmancy uh, coffin. And they say, you're making the deceased happy. It's not true. <laughs> it's not true. Get the $3,000 pine coffin. That's it. Get buried in a nice spot, but the coffin should be nice and simple, nice and wood. So that is our six reasons as to why we have and why the 15th of Av became a very big day in the Jewish calendar. And that is why the 15th of Av was always celebrated by the singles in the temple.